It happened in August 2019 while I was visiting my cousin and friends in Yokohama. I was 19 at the time. I was on my way back from my friend's apartment to my cousin's place where I was staying. It was close enough so I decided to walk, despite it already being dark and late. I was close to Yokohama Harbor, walking on the pathway right next to water. In the distance, I noticed a figure standing next to the railing staring at the sea. There was nobody else around. I got a strange feeling from them, but I had to pass them. The figure didn't move when I got close. For some reason, I stopped to look at them when I was right behind them. The person was wearing a black trench coat reaching past their knees and had their hands tucked into its pockets. While I was staring at them, they turned around to look at me. The street lamps provided a good light and I was standing close enough to make out their features. It was a girl, clearly foreign, and the first thing I noticed was how absolutely beautiful she was. Rather tall, maybe around 5'8", dressed in modern entirely black clothes with dark weavy hair reaching her shoulders. She was young, couldn't be older than 18, maybe younger. My gaze lingered on her eyes and a chill went down my spine. They were light, but completely empty, emotionless. It was like looking into a void. She stared at me. Her expression was blank. It didn't change since she turned to me. But I had a feeling she was waiting for me to do or say something. I tried, but I couldn't find words. I was frozen in place. We stared at each other for a while, until at one moment I blinked and she disappeared. There was nowhere she could have gone, just vanished into thin air. Scared, I hurried to my cousin's apartment. When he saw me, he pointed out that I looked white as a sheet, but hearing my story he just laughed that I hallucinated a hot girl. I researched Japanese urban legends out of curiosity, but I couldn't find anything about a young girl wearing a trench coat. She didn't even look like a ghost. It was like looking at a normal human being. A few days later, while my cousin and I were on our way back to his apartment, something on the other side of the street caught my eye. I looked, and in the shadow of a back alley, leaning against the wall, was the same girl, still dressed in black, wearing a coat. She was clearly looking at me. Her expression was the same as then, blank, maybe a little bored. I shook my cousin's shoulder and told him to look, but when he did, she was already gone, just vanished again. For the rest of my stay, I had a feeling someone was watching me whenever I went outside, and sometimes I could see the black coat in the crowd. It could have just been my paranoia, but I was seriously afraid. When I came back home, the feeling stopped and nothing weird happened again. Does anyone have any ideas what that could have been? This happened to my mom about a year ago while she was visiting me. I woke up to get a drink around 4 a.m. one night. My mom works third shift, so she was still awake and I decided to hang out with her. She told me she'd just gotten back from the 24-7. When my mom was on her way back from the store around 3.30 a.m., she could see what looked like a person crawling on the road. She rolled her window down and as she got closer, she could hear a woman screeching absolute bloody murder. My mom described her as looking like her jaw was about to unhinge. My mom isn't easily fooled, but she wasn't going to just flat out ignore the situation either. She remained in her locked car and yelled out to see if the woman was okay and if she needed the cops. The girl just started going on about how her parents are after her or something. As the girl is rambling, my mom sees a car coming from the other direction. My mom yells at her to get out of the road, and as she notices the car, she gets up like it's no problem. The car passes, and then a guy that seems like her boyfriend appears out of nowhere. He's yelling at the girl, Oh babe, I'm so glad you're okay. He's saying just random stuff and trying to get her to go with him. She doesn't seem afraid of him, but just as he notices my mom, he's at my mom's window practically instantly. He covered about 20 feet in what seemed like a split second. This whole ordeal was just too strange, so my mom sped out of there. Once my mom made it back to my house, she called the police. They told her they've received one or two calls about this already that night, and they didn't act too concerned. As my mom told me the story, it made my skin crawl. This all happened about a 10 minute walk from my house. I've never had any kind of problems in the three years I've lived here, and nothing even close has happened since. It was nearing midnight, and I was sitting at the kitchen table talking to my boyfriend's mom while he was prepping food for the next day. As I'm talking to his mom, I hear a strange sound coming from outside of the kitchen. 
I brought it up and they both agreed that it was probably just a raccoon or some other late night dweller, as those are common in the area. We continue to talk, then we hear it again, though it is far louder and noticeably less raccoony. Definitely did not sound like anything that belonged in this side of the yard. My boyfriend ultimately decides to go investigate. There is a door attached to the kitchen, which opens to a small elevated area with stairs leading down to the outside basement door and the yard. He pointed his flashlight at the bottom of the stairs in hopes of identifying the animal that was making these awful sounds. He steps down slowly onto one of the steps. Suddenly, he turns around and comes back into the kitchen, locking the door immediately behind him. I have never seen him act this way. He proceeded to tell his mom and I to lock all the windows and the doors in the house. I was petrified with no idea what he saw or what we were trying to avoid. He said that he saw something shiny and upon closer inspection, realized it was the Adidas logo attached to track pants that someone was wearing, and that someone was slumped at the bottom of the stairs. The groaning continued, getting progressively louder and more guttural. He tried flashing a light at the unidentified person in our yard, asking them questions. Are you okay? Do you need help? No answer, just unintelligible words. We were all concerned as to how this person ended up in our yard, given that that side gate was closed. We noticed the person had a large backpack which was concerning as well. The lack of responsiveness led us to call the police to send first responders over. Before they arrived, he gradually came to and became more aware of his surroundings and began talking, saying things like, Where am I? and I can't believe this happened again all while sobbing and shaking. Once the responders arrived, they were able to get the man up and out. They discovered that he was homeless and clearly not well, and suspected that he was on some sort of drug. We all felt bad for him as clearly there was some kind of mental issues going on. He was a sympathetic character, that was until the officers told us that he actually had multiple warrants out for his arrest. When I was 15 years old, I had a summer job helping my brother out with selling strawberries at a farmer's market. I only worked on the weekends and he would pay me 50 bucks at the end of each day. I was helping my brother set up the table when an elderly man approached us and said, mmm, mm, mm, as if he was looking at the strawberries on the table next to me. My brother replied, what? The man just walked past us, not saying another word. My brother and I just continued on setting up and started working. A few hours went by, and my brother was going on his smoke break. He asked me if I could watch the table when he was gone, and since we weren't really getting any customers, I wasn't really worried about talking to people. I was checking the time on my phone when someone was approaching the table. It was the same old man that had been there earlier that day. He was just standing there, not saying anything. Can I help you? I asked him. There was no response. The man just looked at me and then looked back at the strawberries. Mmm, is all I heard from him. I replied politely, Pardon me? He just looked back up at me and kept repeating, Mmm. This freaked me out a bit because the man wasn't saying anything else at first. I thought maybe he had some issues, so I tried to be as helpful and polite as I could be. After a while, my brother shortly appeared and asked if the man needed any help. The man just kept stuttering and saying, Mmm. My brother gave me a look like he was getting really weirded out too. The man gave out a big gasp as if he was holding his breath for a long time. Then he started talking normally. How much are the strawberries? My brother gave the man a price and he bought them. I was bagging up the strawberries for him. When I reached out my hand to give him his strawberries, he grabbed my wrist really tightly. He muttered again, Mmm. My brother raised his voice at the man and just yelled, Hey! The man let go instantly and walked away quickly. The day was almost over for us, so I asked my brother if I could go to the bathroom before we started packing up. He told me yes, but to hurry because he wanted to get home fast. I went to this coffee shop that wasn't that far away from my table and used the washroom. As I was walking up the stairs, I thought I heard footsteps coming up from behind me. I didn't think to look back because I really had to go pee and was running to find the bathroom. When I was done using the washroom and washing my hands, I heard the bathroom door open. I didn't see who came in, because it was one of those bathrooms where it was split down the middle. The sinks were on one side of the wall, and the toilet were on the other side of the wall where the door was. I was getting ready to leave the bathroom when I saw a man standing there. 
the same man that had grabbed my wrist. He was standing in front of the door, blocking it so I couldn't leave. All he said was, mmm, and nothing else. He just stood there with a smirk on his face, muttering, mmm, and that was it. I was really freaked out by this and tried to get away and pass him, but then the man ran at me, grabbed me, and started running his hands up and down my body, still loudly yelling, mmm, mmm, mmm. I was going to scream for help, but the man put his hand over my mouth, pushing down on me, making sure I couldn't breathe. Luckily, the door swung open and a woman came in to use the washroom and saw the man in there. He let go instantly and I pushed him off of me and ran away. I got back to my table where my brother was. He was packing up everything and asked me what took so long. I told him what had happened in the bathroom and he told me to stay by his side and not to leave his sight. As we were bringing the table into the back of the truck, I saw the man that had tried to assault me in the bathroom. I ran to my brother and told him that was the man. The man made eye contact with me and started walking towards us. My brother gave me the car keys and told me to get into the truck and lock it while he finished grabbing the last box of strawberries. I saw the man standing on the steps, looking at me with a creepy smile on his face, laughing and waving at me. He started walking towards the truck. I looked around to see where my brother was. Luckily, I could see him in the distance carrying the last box of strawberries. The man started running towards the truck to my side of the door. Then he started pounding on the window and jiggling the handle. He kept muttering, mmm, as loud as he could, and he started mouthing the words, I'm gonna get you, little girl. You haven't seen the last of me, or that's what I made out, and followed up with a creepy-like clown laugh. My brother saw this and sprinted towards the man. The man must have gotten scared by my brother and started running away. My brother got into the truck and drove off fast. That was the last time I ever went to work for a long while. To this day, my brother and I don't speak about what happened that day. Honestly, because I don't want to, and it was one of the scariest moments in my life. This happened a few months ago. So, I work as a nurse and started a new job 45 minutes away at a nursing home that pays well and has the shift I want. The shift I normally work is weekend doubles, evening, and overnights, a 16-hour shift a day. But they needed me to work morning and evening this particular weekend, and I agreed. The night shift nurse who came to relieve me was late Sunday night. I was giving a report and heard a yelling resident on the floor. He was with it and said he fell. He was wearing warm socks that are not non-slip and was sent to the ER due to his hip. Get out of work at 1 to 2 a.m., close to a 20-hour shift after a 17-hour shift the day before. I was dead on my feet, but I felt well enough to drive. My car is very tiny, I can't sleep in it, and my friends wouldn't answer the phone. The way I go home has a lot of twists and turns. I travel by the lake and love the water so it helps me stay awake. It was around here that I realized that I wasn't wearing my glasses, but I was too lazy to turn around to get them. I only wear them to work and drive, but take them off to chart. I forget them a lot. I go past the small town, twist turns and woods, listening to my book to keep awake. I was about halfway home. At the next turn, there was a bright light like a spotlight coming through the woods. I continue on a little bit further, still in the wooden area, and towards where the bright light is coming from. I bend in the road once more, on the side of the road where the night before I saw and hit a deer. Standing there looked to be a very thin man, skin tight, black clothes kneeling over the deer that is still there, his back is towards me. I thought he looked weird, but my glasses were gone and my eyes are starting to blur a little bit at this point. The spotlight was coming from the woods, pointing towards the man. I remember looking at the light, thinking about how they got their vehicle through the woods. But again, I was dead tired. I try to pause my book, and my car slows down, nearly stopping. The man starts to move from the deer. I roll down my window and ask, Is everything okay? Need any help? Not really looking at him. I thought, maybe it was a different deer, and he had hit it. I'm about 15 to 20 or so feet in front of them. My car has stopped at this point. I'm still trying to get my book to stop. My touchscreen radio isn't working well, so I pick up my phone and stop my book. I really look towards the man after looking away from my phone, finally getting my book to stop, and realize that he, or she, isn't a human. I freeze. It stood up and faced me. The head is huge like they described aliens to be with huge eyes. Except, it's tall. Not a tiny thing like they show on TV. It starts to walk towards my car. I can't breathe. I can't move. I felt like I couldn't even think. Everything just felt like it froze. 
I heard a voice, not mine, that sounded like it was just in my head, saying, Sleep. I blink. It's gone along with the deer. I look at my clock. It's almost 4 a.m. My car is in park now and I'm pulled over with no memory of doing so. My window is still down. I look at my phone, which is still in my hand, open it, and my book is still stopped in the same place. I try to call my sister, but she wouldn't answer. So I call my job. They answer. I just ask about my glasses and the resident. I eventually tell her I fell asleep and wanted to talk to someone so it doesn't happen again and everyone is asleep. She stayed on the phone till I got home. I don't think I fell asleep, but I pretend I did so I don't go insane. I haven't told anyone this. It scares me just thinking about it. If I did fall asleep, I could have hurt someone. If I didn't, then what does it mean? This is like the hardest experience out of many to believe, even for myself. It honestly is the only one that makes me tear up a little to even write about. Not out of fear, but out of profundity and confusion. This experience was one of the most emotionally moving and just powerful moments I've ever had. And if it is real, the implication it holds are just so hard to wrap my head around. A few years ago, I was on my bed studying. I was very tired and fell asleep on top of the sheets with my clothes on. I have no memory of anything happening before I started to have a dream. It was a dream in which I really have no words to describe. There was an entity that I can only describe as a three-dimensional shape that was strobing, illuminating, and constantly morphing. It spoke to me in what I can only describe as machine. I don't know what it was saying, but I understood it. I just felt connected to it. At first, I felt a little nervous, but shortly after being with it, I felt safe. I felt comforted. I began to interact with it, with my mind. Not with words, but with just intention. I began influencing its shape, the strobing patterns, and the sound with my mind, but it felt like a back and forth interaction, not just me controlling it, but us controlling each other. And the most insane sounding shit ever, it felt like love. This shape, entity, slowly faded in brightness and size, and then back to full sleep. The weird part is the next part. People can relate to falling dreams, but this was something different. Upon waking up, I could not move. It felt like trying to peel yourself off a wall while in a Gravitron, like those rides at the fairs, parks. I couldn't open my eyes. My entire head felt like it was under immense pressure. It felt like swimming to the bottom of a very deep pool. My ears were in immense pain from a feeling of pressure. There was a sound of an airplane taking off, so loud that I thought I would go deaf. I felt like my body was vibrating and my legs started shaking a bit. I don't know if I was actually shaking or if it just felt like it. My stomach felt like I was going down a steep hill on a roller coaster. I slammed into my body. I don't even know, that's what it felt like. I gasped for air, my ears ringing. I felt extremely dizzy and disorientated. I couldn't even get up for several seconds, like my head was spinning, as if I were drunk or something. I got up and went to the bathroom with this general sense of confusion. There was no fear, just complete, what was that? I've never had an answer and somehow just like went back to sleep. I have never been the same since, and for the better, I woke up the next day and just felt like I could see better. This has happened to me more than once. I'm crying a little finishing this, because I have never told anyone this in a way that suggested how serious it was. I would give a little laugh at the end and then brush past it. Weird, huh? But deep down I knew it was so, so much more than weird. Whatever happened changed me in a way I can't describe. It wasn't the same as a weird dream, it was something much, much deeper. And the, what if it happened, is slowly feeling more like, I believe this happened. If this is truly an experience rooted in reality, the implications are just, out of this world. <laughs>